Hello, fellow detectives. Welcome back to Unlocked, the official podcast for all things Nancy Drew by Her Interactive. Heads up, there will be spoilers in this episode. I'm your host, Tammy Tucky, and this week we welcome the voices behind two of our favorite Stay Tuned for Danger characters, Mariah Angeline, the voice of Maddie Jensen, and Ryan Drummond, the voice of Rick Arlen. Welcome, you two. Hi. Thanks. It's great to have you guys on the show. I'm I'm a big fan of Stay Tuned for Danger. It's for some of us, it's actually our favorite and first Nancy Drew game. So it's wow. great to be speaking to the Rick Arlen and the Maddie Jensen. <laughs> <laughs> have you guys ever gotten a chance to speak about Stay Tuned for Danger in, in the past couple of years? No, I mean, to be honest, I tried playing the game and I couldn't even get to the level where I could hear myself. <laughs> I don't think I ever got to where I was speaking either. Uh, I think the opening credits, I nailed those. And uh, and then after that, it was uh, just all downhill from there. We've already had Bob Heath on the show, who, as I've already previously stated at the beginning of this podcast, we're going to have spoilers. Um, Bob was the uh, bad guy in this in this case. He's such a good guy playing a bad guy. Yay, Bob. I know. Did you guys get to meet him at all or any of the other voice cast uh, like before recording or afterwards? Some of them, we kind of all ran in some of the same circles in Southern California. Uh, yeah. Just the whole the voiceover community, as as it were. Um, I don't believe I met anybody during the recording of Stay Tuned for Danger, except except I worked with Lonnie Manella because she was the uh, the vocal coach on the sessions. Yeah. Um, so she was in studio at the time, but um, but I. I've met several other of the cast members just uh, on other projects and back in that same time period. Period. Uh, yeah, you know, to be honest, that was my first voiceover job. So I think I was taking it all in at the time. I, as Ryan said, I, of course, knew Lonnie uh, and worked with her quite a bit. But uh, if I did meet other voice actors, I only remember Ryan because we were already friends. Yeah, Mariah and I go back a long way. And and it's interesting. I didn't. I had no idea that this was your first voiceover job, Mariah. But how did both of you kind I don't of? Think I knew that either. <laughs> how did you both <laughs> enter the entertainment industry? I was one of those kids who loved to sing and dance. I was in dance recitals when I was younger, and then as I was in junior high and high school, I did theater. And uh, as far as voiceovers, I got in through to voiceovers through Ryan. We worked together at SeaWorld for about three years and he called me up and said, hey, they're looking for some women, some female voices, and I think you should audition. I think you'd be great at it. And so I did and, and uh, Nancy Drew was my first first job. Yeah, kind of the same uh, the same story as Mariah. I grew up in a, a theater family. Uh, my parents are both retired theater people. Uh, teachers and directors. My my father directed me in my first 10 shows when I was a kid. Um, and uh, so I've just kind of, this is all I've done is entertainment stuff uh, my entire life. In fact, it's kind of funny. There's a there's an actor who works in Southern California who, um, I won't say him by name just in case, but <laughs> but he grew up and his father was an astronaut for NASA. And so he lived in a community where all the people who lived on his street um, all the all the fathers were all astronauts, and he always tells this funny story where he said he was 12 or 13 years old when he finally realized that not everybody's father became an astronaut. He thought that that's what people did. <laughs> they grew up and they became an astronaut. Um, and I kind of had the same deal with the entertainment industry. My parents were always in it. Um, that's all they did. And so I just kind of grew up in that environment, and it was such a natural progression. It's like it wasn't like I didn't have any other choice of going into any other career. My parents were very supportive in anything I wanted to do. But uh, but it was just like, that's the family business. And I started doing shows as soon as I could walk. And it hasn't it hasn't ended yet. In in, uh, in, in the acting biz, I think you uh, actors are a, an observant bunch by nature. And so you always are kind of like when you meet people and you do different shows and different projects and you're meeting different people, I think either consciously or subconsciously, you're drawing on different uh, things from people to to take later on when you need them. And definitely, I think uh, Rick is based on a, a number of people I've met in my life, all, you know, drawn into one melted crayon. 
And it was interesting they added like another layer saying that Rick was truly in love with Maddie and he would write these romantic letters to her, but he would not really reveal that side of him, that romantic kind side to him he always had to be rick arlen the star the tv star <laughs> I, I read that recently and i was just like i i didn't get to that point in the game so i didn't know that <laughs> until recently and i was like really was he i, I, don't, I don't know <laughs> and maddie was like the girl next door everybody wanted to be friends with her from what i've heard like they don't even tell you who is the villain until the very very end so you kind of have to play it as if each of the characters are pretty much innocent but how did you go around with your take of of maddie well yeah i think you know a lot of times when you record voiceovers you you record all of your lines so you don't see or hear the lines from any of the other characters so there is that disconnect that you're really just focused on your own character a lot of the times um with maddie and the the girl next door feel um and the um the person that you'd like to talk sit and talk to i would i would like to 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 believe without uh tooting my own horn that that is the person that i am so i feel like maddie was some one of the characters closest to mariah um because, you know, not a cartoon voice, not a wizard, not a elf that lives in the woods. But, but, a, but, a, but yeah, that person that you'd want to hang out with. Wait a minute, Mar- Mariah, you're not an elf that lives in the woods? Well, sometimes. <laughs> I was, yeah, I was just say, on every other here. Saturday. And if I can just uh, uh, echo on what Mariah just said, uh, she's right. She's totally right. I've known her for a long, long time. And I, I think I knew you for two or three years before we did Stay Tuned for Danger. So... I can uh, I can echo that sentiment. That's that's uh, pretty much the uh, the nucleus of Mariah is what you hear in the Maddie character. We did a lot of games together, but like I said, not together. Doing different characters, we were in the game. I think this and there's only one other game that we've done together where our characters actually interact. Which I was think. what? I I um. I can't Somebody's going to know. Somebody or, listening is going to know. Or it was we were the two avatars. That might have been it. It was a, a Russian spy game. Oh. <laughs> can't think yeah, of it. Yeah, that's kind of familiar. I think yeah. we were the avatars. But that was the only time that we really were connected other than Maddie and Rick. Were the images of the characters presented to you initially at the beginning? Or did you get to see them after you did most of the recordings. For that game, I believe we did have some images, um, but they also may have been working images, so they may not have been the final uh, animation. Mm -hmm. Um, But I'd say probably a good solid 50% of the time you have, uh, well, actually closer, these days, it's uh, a lot more common to have imagery and um, and cut scenes and things that you can look at. But back then when we were recording this in the late 90s, it was probably just a coin toss whether or not you got a picture of who you were um, and uh, sometimes you didn't even get a full script like Mariah said earlier you just get line uh, lists of lines and you uh, have to kind of look towards the director and hopefully there's a rep there from the game who can tell you in this particular line you're yelling at someone across the room in this line you're whispering at someone in this line you're angry at them in this line you're you know and they kind yeah. of have to fill in a lot of these blanks um, and I think that's um, where sometimes the, the voiceover work from the early uh, years, the, the mid to late 90s, can get a little funny because sometimes the way you uh, perform something and the take that they took doesn't really match with what the animation ended up at, uh, you know, being. Okay. Um, and as far as this game goes, um, I, I think we got some pictures of the actual people, but I don't think we had any animation to look at. Mariah, does that jive with what you remember? Yes, I think we got descriptions. You know, she looks yeah. like this and she's, yeah. Today, it's just a lot more um, things. I, I don't know exactly behind the scenes why things have changed per se, um, but I think, um, it, but today you get a lot more um, information. Characters are fleshed out a lot more for you. Um, back then, you maybe had like a small paragraph. And uh, now you can go in to do a session and there'll be like a couple pages of you know, description about who this person is and their likes and their dislikes and their families. And, and all these characters have been very fleshed out by the video game companies. Um, and and uh, they also have a lot of uh, animation that you can look at, sometimes entire scenes that you do ADR or looping or you're actually adding your voice to an already existing animation. Um, that happens a lot more often where uh, it seems like 
back then when Stay Tuned for Danger was recorded, it was a lot more common to record the voices and then they'll make some animation that fits whatever you recorded rather mm -hmm. than vice versa. Right. In fact, it's kind of funny, I mean, not to pull another game into the conversation, but just as an example of what you're talking about, um, I think I have these these numbers correct, but somebody will double check me and say, no, you're off by a million. But but it, I, as I recall reading, the day that Star Wars The Phantom Menace came out, it made $28 million in its first day. And, and the whole industry was just like, oh my gosh, $28 million in one day. It was like the biggest opening day of in history at the time. And when the first Sonic Adventure game came out with uh, Dreamcast, that made $46 million in the first day, and nobody mentioned it because it just wasn't part of the... It wasn't part of the, uh, the the scope of what people were talking about at the time. Um, but now, you know, video games are such a multi-gazillion dollar thing. They, uh, they're all part of the contracts. Whenever uh, a movie starts to be filmed, you already have the video game plan probably uh, halfway through animation before you even start, you know, uh, shooting the movie. Uh, it's just a different world now. Uh, Ryan, if you don't, I'm sure you, Tammy, that you know that Ryan was the voice of uh, Sonic the Hedgehog. And uh, I was in the second, the Sonic Adventure 2, as a very small role. And somebody sent me an email on YouTube with a link to the video queued right to the part that my character was on and said, is this you? I'm a huge fan. It was fascinating to me because I hadn't, I hadn't seen it since I recorded it. And I... I've realized looking at YouTube and looking at other games for the same reason as, as <laughs> Stay Tuned for Danger that I can't get to the part where my character speaks and so I want to see it. <laughs> uh, I, I can't get to it by playing it myself, so I'll watch, you know, watch it on YouTube and go, oh, that, that, oh, that looks really neat. I, that's me in a pink dress flying through And isn't that funny? Isn't that funny that that's <laughs> nothing we would have even considered that would be possible when we recorded it? It's like right. if, if somebody would have come to us and said, you know, uh, you know, 17 years from now, this entire game, somebody will play through the whole thing and they'll put it on the internet where you can, anyone can watch it. You'd be like, what? You'd be drunk <laughs> home, you know? So yes. that's amazing. It's, no, it's fascinating that there's this whole culture that, that are so into it. Um, and, and I had no idea that would be a thing. Yeah. It, it's the only way to be a real detective. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's always fun to find out who the villain is. So were you both a little bit disappointed that it wasn't, either of your characters when you found out in the very end, like who it was specifically? <laughs> I, I think, uh... To be honest, I was so excited to have my first voiceover job that I just was happy to do it. <laughs> and usually it's kind of like, in, as far as my character goes, usually the person that's painted really uh, thickly up front to be kind of like the negative person or the pompous person or the person you wouldn't want to hang out with. And you think, uh, uh, that's not going to be the murder. That's just too easy. So, yeah. <laughs> well, well, looking back on it now, you know, the ending of the game kind of leaves up for interpretation of, uh, of both Rick and Maddie, you know, getting back together as a couple. And their on-screen personas get married in the TV series. So Rick does stay with the show, which is good news. Um, but yeah. what do you guys think Rick and Maddie would be up to now? <laughs> I think that they were inspired by Nancy. Drew and they opened a private investigating uh, office and they became crime fighters uh, in their old age together as a couple. They're like <laughs> the thin man, but you know, in 2016. I love it. We, 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 we haven't seen each other in many, many months and that was what I was thinking as well and you just that, took that out of my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> well, do you mind if we uh, have a little conversation with Rick and Maddie? Would that be okay? I have a couple questions for them. <laughs> okay, let's open that Pandora's box. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so Rick, um, you're a fabulous actor. Of course, everybody already knows I that. Know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Me too. Um, where where did you where did you get the inspiration to be so great? You know why? How? Where does this greatness come from? Well, I'll tell you, Tammy. Uh, the the greatness that comes within just comes straight from me. I mean, I could say that I'm standing on the uh, the shoulders of giants, but really, uh, it's just standing on my own shoulders, which is difficult to do. Just try and picture that in your head. Um, I, uh, I had heroes in my life, but I like to think that I'm a self-made man. So uh, everything that you see, all this greatness that you see pouring out of me, it's, uh, it's all me. It's just, uh, it's just all me natural. 
Uh, I can't even say my mother or father had anything to do with it. It's it's just me. Thank you for asking. And and why why no Emmys? Why no Academy Awards? Don't they see the greatness that is you? Don't they see the talent? I, I, I you know what people have been saying this lately, but you know all those awards things, they're all rigged. <laughs> they're completely rigged. Now, what do you think of Dwayne Powers? Now, he was the one who was trying to kill you, of course, but, uh, you know, he's now behind bars. Or Oh, he, he actually broke free. I forgot about that. Didn't you hear about that he what? in the news? Yes, he broke free. And now we don't know where he is. Uh, yeah, this is new information for me. I didn't know that he was out. Um, I got to go. Uh, I got to <laughs> buy uh, some barbed wire and some hand grenades. <laughs> And Maddie, you know, you you have been together with Rick for so long, um, and you you uh, you kind of go along with his ego. Is there really a tender side to him, though? Well, watch it, watch it. <laughs> yes, there there are things that we keep to ourselves behind closed doors, and there are things that we present to the public. And I will say that I will just say that there is a reason that I stay with Rick, and it. It's not for everyone to know. You also have an amazing style and, and, and taste in decorating your apartment. You know, where does that where does that come from? Because it just looks so homely and uh, just very relaxing to just sit in there by the fireplace and, and look around. And it's just a beautiful, bright home. Well, you know, I, I did, did study a little bit. Uh, um, I studied a little bit in Japan. And I really love the idea of feng shui and how... If you place things in your home in a certain way, it brings light and energy to your surroundings. And I just like to have a place where I can relax and where I can have friends. Now, if there was any role that you could play on TV now for both of you, what role would you love to kind of just steal away from another actor and play yourself? Ooh, good one. I, I think I would enjoy playing the unbreakable Kimmy Schmidt. I love her optimism. I, I love her. Uh, she's her smile just lights up the screen, and I, I I would I would love to dive into that. And everybody knows that I'm hilarious, so I think I would like to be both Key and Peel. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, Rick and Maddie, for talking with us today. I, I'm sure I'm sure we'll hopefully see you guys sometime in the near future in a Nancy Drew game. And, and thank uh, you from your mouth to the universe. Yes, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> that was so much fun. <laughs> <laughs> I, I keep hoping that Maddie and Rick will come back and, and we'll see them in, a, in another Nancy Drew game in the near future. So if that opportunity ever arose, would you both be interested in reprising your roles? Oh, absolutely. Oh, always. You know, I cannot thank you both enough for coming on the show. And I, first, before we end our interview, I want to make sure I open up the floor because both of you have been working on several different projects since <laughs> Stay Tuned for Danger. But what is the yeah. most uh, recent? <laughs> what is the most recent project? Projects that you have been working on that our listeners can go ahead and check out online or on TV? Oh my gosh, the most recent. Let me think. Uh, most of the recent things that I've done have been uh, live theater, so there isn't really anything to check out uh, as far as that goes. But <clears throat> I do have a website with a lot of videos from, um, I've done some solo cabaret shows and uh, I used to sing at a soul night in New York, so uh, they can check out MariahAngeline.net. And I have done, uh, it seems a lot of the voiceovers I've been doing lately have been for uh, corporate videos and also for um, uh, radio spots. So um, I don't know if they are online anywhere or whether where you can hear them. You have a pretty extensive uh, IMDb page, don't you, Ryan? Uh, I, some Somebody put that there. Um, mm -hmm. I sure didn't. Uh, <laughs> oh, mine too. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I mean, of course, IMDb and uh, just, uh, you know, there's... There's a lot of material out there of people uh, talking um, about, uh, you know, the Sonic uh, franchise and so forth. And if you just want to, you know, uh, have fun with a few hours of your life, just uh, <laughs> just type that into YouTube and just uh, <clears throat> watch people go. I love it. And to close our interview, my last question, if you could describe your experience working for Her Interactive and on this Nancy Drew game, what is the one word you would use to describe that entire experience? I think I would just have to say fun. I remember it being a really, a really lovely day. It was it was fun, and the people were very easy to work with, especially because I was nervous it being my first voiceover job, and I didn't want to do it incorrectly. And I remember feeling at ease very quickly and having just a wonderful time. And Mariah stole my word. I was going to say lovely, just a lovely experience. <laughs> good good people and a, and a good company. I'm so glad that they're. 
uh, still alive and kicking after all this time. Yeah.